Welcome back to my channel. I love hearing from you guys. And when this video request came in, I immediately thought, why does this not already exist on the channel? Playing piano dynamics on bassoon is a challenge for every bassoonist that I have ever met, especially because we are so often matched with the clarinet and the clarinet has those breath tones that are just idiomatic on a style of instrument. For us, that's a little bit more of a challenge. So today we're gonna to talk about playing piano dynamics on bassoon and response. For bassoonists that are going to start doing quieter playing, I notice that oftentimes they confuse less air with air speed. This means that they use very slow air, even though they are trying to use less air in order to get that dynamic contrast out. And this is natural. So oftentimes I see this in my beginner intermediate students when they start playing in the tenor register, that their tenor register will just be flat because they are using less air in order to get that dynamic contrast, but then they are challenged because they don't have the air speed. So be careful and note that there's a difference between air speed as well as the amount of air. For beginners, I like to help them observe this with the utilization of a pinwheel. And a pinwheel gives that nice ability of a visual element so that you can see the air instead of just feeling the air. By having beginners use less air but keep the pinwheel moving at a fast enough speed, that will keep their dynamics in tune. My second key tip and trick is to relax the body. Now, this is the opposite of what we want to do because oftentimes when these pieces are written with this dynamic contrast of a like a pianissimo entrance in the low register, we all go into the, oh, I wanna get this, and we tense the body because we're so on edge, is it gonna come out? When what we need to do is the opposite of our natural response, and that's relax the body. By relaxing the body, we allow the body to vibrate, the instrument to vibrate, and the air to move freely from the body into the instrument. Now, for those of you that are a little bit more advanced and you like to work with your reeds, let's talk about how your reeds can actually help you with dynamic contrast. When I know I have a lot of pianissimo playing on bassoon, I actually lean towards a softer style of cane. For those of you that are new to my channel, I have been testing several different types of cane in the last year, and I have them in a video from the hardest to the softest. So you can go ahead and watch that video and choose the type of cane that is going to match your style of playing and the ensemble and the ensemble venue. So if I know that I'm going to be playing chamber music with a lot of clarinet breath tones, I might, you know, ebb more towards the Cote d'Azur, but if I know that I'm going to be doing a bit more orchestral second bassoon playing and I need to have a bit more projection in it, I might be adding a bit of Guy's cane into my reed box for that month. So again, try to match the strength of the cane to the ensemble. Now, softer cane is not going to have the projection that harder cane has. So if you need that pianissimo style of playing, but you're still doing principal bassoon, you might consider scraping the reed in order to give you that best response. For my own style of playing and response of the pianissimo dynamics, I make sure that I have the lightest tip possible on the reed. I actually scrape a crescent moon at the very, very tip of the reed. And after I scrape a crescent moon at the tip of the reed, I also go over it with a bit of sandpaper so that air has no little bulges that would stop it from just sliding into the reed.
I know I have a lot of low notes and I need great response on the low notes, I will typically scrape out the back of the reed just in front of the collar, adding a little bit of window light when I hold it up against a desk lamp. I can see windows of light that will come through at the very back of the reed and this will aid in low note response. has a bit of a kickstart response and it's just a little bit more resistant than I want it to be, I will actually shift from using a rounder tube to a more oval tube. Now, I love a round tube because it gives a nice dark sound, but it can also increase the level of resistance. By going to a more oval shape of the tube, I can actually shift that so that I get greater response and it will add a bit more projection if it is a softer style of cane. Okay guys, thank you so much for the video suggestion. If you have other video suggestions, I would love to hear from you. Be sure to leave, leave me a comment. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss any future videos, be sure to click that subscribe button. If you wanna keep up on all my bassoon adventures from trying cane, other products, and gigging and teaching, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Yesterday was JSU Double Read Day, and in honor of Double Read players everywhere, I'm going to mix things up a little bit on my channel and talk to you about oboe mandrels and homemade oboe mandrels. What?